I was looking into what kind of collaborative processes were used prior to the existence of pull requests. I'm from the generation of developers that have from day one been told that GitHub is where you host your code and collaboration is synonymous with pull requests. I've never really questioned the usage of pull requests as part of my contribution workflow. That is until I looked into self-hosting my Git servers. You can use something like Git-T, which is essentially a clone of GitHub and supplies a lot of overlapping functionality with what GitHub provides. But I wanted to geek out and do something terminal-based like SoftServe. One of my biggest concerns with SoftServe off the bat was that there is no collaborative workflows that are defined in the software itself. And as someone who has never been exposed to any form of collaborative workflow that wasn't pull requests, I was like, how do we collaborate here? And I decided to do some digging myself. That being said, I do remember in one of the interviews that I've conducted on the Charm channel, someone was describing how in the good old days, developers would email patches, git patches to the maintainer. From there, the maintainer could modify it and apply it to the code base. Pull requests though, they allow for two things. They allow for feature branching, which is developing a new feature on a branch and the scope of that branch is limited to just that one thing. And then there's a pre-integration code review. And this is the part that I was most concerned about because obviously you can just merge a branch into master or main with no issue. But what about getting feedback on that and the back and forth that that requires? Because GitHub as a platform has created this incredible interface for having that back and forth and providing feedback on these changes. After some digging, I was able to find Martin Fowler's take on this. For those who don't know, Martin Fowler is a well-known author in the tech space. He's written the book Refactoring, which I think for a lot of people is like the top five programming books. He's a great author. I've read the book. I really liked it. I really like a lot of his takes. So I was really happy to see that he's written something about these collaborative workflows and even specifically pull requests. One thing that he says is a deciding factor in what code review process works best for you depends entirely on the level of trust of the contributors and the social structure of the organization. With that being said, let's talk about open source because open source is a completely different ballgame. There are a ton of low trust contributors and an itty bitty group of highly trusted maintainers. Given the nature of this dynamic, I can definitely understand why a pre-integration code review would be incredibly valuable. You want to make sure that the code quality is up to snuff, that it's introducing meaningful changes and it's not introducing any new bugs or security vulnerabilities. With that being said, when someone wants to contribute to an open source project and they open a pull request, it does increase the friction to contribute a little bit. The person who's wanting to contribute creates a request that then has to get filtered through the itty bitty group of trusted maintainers. This could lead to a significant bottleneck if it's a popular project. The nice thing about pull requests is that you can provide the feedback asynchronously. So time zones no longer are a factor, but the work is also asynchronous. So you might get a response from the maintainer giving you some feedback, and then you're waiting on them to review it again the next time. It can lead to some latency when it comes to contributing your work. Now let's talk about another option that is pair programming. Pair programming is interesting. It's such a mixed bag in the tech space because some people you either love it or you hate it. I've heard from some developers that they think it's too expensive. You're getting two developers to do the the same task that only one person needs to do. But pair programming also provides an opportunity to get real-time code review from your colleague. So those changes that you've just made can be immediately integrated into the code base. Compared to the pre-integration quality assurance workflow that you get with pull requests, pair programming allows you to receive feedback in real time and apply those changes synchronously so there is no waiting. Your code will not sit stagnant. But this option requires a lot more investment of their time from the code reviewer. But as always, pair programming is a great way to learn from your seniors in a very synchronous way. Now this next one really stuck out to me. And if it's not clear already, I am highlighting the options that did speak to me. If you want to read the entire blog post, I will link it in the description. And there's a lot more options that he provides for code review and 
working collaboratively in general. So take a look there if you wanna read more in depth. The next one is refinement code review. This lands on the side of post integration code review, which sounds crazy when you're coming from the side of like pull requests all the way, you know? This is what Martin Fowler refers to as the continuous practice of improving the quality of the code base. This means you're actually reading through the code base and flagging things that need to be improved and then actually making those changes and improving the software on a regular basis. Martin Fowler makes a good point that software should be soft. It is something that is meant to continuously change shape, whether that is in the branches or even after releases. By trying to create and maintain a pristine code base, it might actually lead to the design aging very poorly. You're integrating new features with old code that may no longer have the best solution given the problem at hand. We've all looked back on the horror of what we wrote six months ago and realized that that was maybe not the best choice. And there's ways that we can fix that. To prevent the technical debt that comes from keeping outdated solutions in a code base, you practice fixing problems as you see them instead of fixing problems every time a new feature is introduced. You're not always going to know if that proposed solution is going to cause problems until it's integrated into the larger code base. This also encourages some really good refactoring practices. Every time you read the code, you should be thinking if there's ways that you can make it more clear. If there's any kind of context that you're needing to get that's not immediately obvious, you should be fixing that and improving the legibility of your code base. This approach also raises the question of when we should be thinking about potential problems. Are we going to address them as they arise or are we going to try and plan for them with the pre-integration workflow? Having a pre-integration code review might allow you to identify some of these potential issues before committing them to a code base. Another valid concern is that whatever isn't being read is also not being reviewed. Now, Fowler works around this by implementing good test practices. In theory, if you have a piece of code that does a certain thing that it's meant to do, you wouldn't really have to read the code if the tests are still passing and you're not really having to work with that one piece of code. It's doing what it says it's supposed to do and you don't really need to look at it. If there are any side effects from these processes, those should be recorded in your tests and fixed. Martin Fowler makes a great point that the code that's likely being read the most is the part of the program that should be getting the most review. Now, security issues are also something that's worth mentioning here. Developers might argue that without a concrete review of what's about to get integrated, it could be integrating new security vulnerabilities without making the team aware. This is a great point, and I think a strong reason why a lot of people feel more comfortable with the pre-integration workflow for conducting code reviews. But that being said, you should have a threat analysis that is happening on your repository on a regular basis and Pairing that with targeted code reviews to address whatever findings there are in the reports. It's very likely that at some point you're going to have some kind of security vulnerability and being able to visualize that and act on it is more important than looking over the code and trying to address it before it goes in. Or at least that's my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> the choice here ultimately comes down to a quicker integration with less friction or a more controlled but a bit choppier integration workflow. It'd be really interesting to hear what everyone thinks about these options in the context of their teams at work and what practices may or may not work. I thought this was really fun to explore as someone who had no idea what other options were out there outside of pull requests. I hope that this inspires you to maybe explore new ways of collaborating in the world where so many people are working remotely. I think there is a certain social element that gets missed with remote work. And I think that some of these might provide some cool opportunities that you can have a bit more of a co-working feel with your colleagues. Even if it's not how you always conduct code review, it is fun to realize that there are ways that you can kind of change it up a bit and that might add value for you. See you in the next video. Bye.